Hi, and welcome again to my videos for Physical Chemistry 2. In this video, we'll start to learn about the shapes molecules have. Many molecules have beautiful symmetric shapes, and we'll learn how to predict the shape from the molecule's formula. But not only are molecules interesting looking, we'll find out that their shapes are absolutely crucial for many of the chemical reactions that happen in your body and keep you alive. To start, let's remember what we know about Lewis dot structures. Here's the Lewis structure for water. You might remember that we can draw the two hydrogens on any two sides of the oxygen. Depending on which sides we choose, the hydrogens look like they're either at a 90 degree angle or on opposite sides of the molecule. Actually, neither of those is true. The Lewis dot structures don't usually look exactly like the actual molecules. For one thing, Lewis dot structures must be flat since we're drawing them on paper or on a computer screen. But in reality, plenty of molecules have interesting three-dimensional shapes, and it turns out we can tell what shape the molecule will be just by looking at the Lewis structure. Here's how. Remember, a chemical bond contains electrons, and we know that all electrons have a negative charge. That means the electrons in the bonds around the central atom in a molecule repel each other. So the electrons get as far apart from each other as possible. So, for example, suppose we have a molecule with two bonds on the central atom, like carbon dioxide. The bonds here are both double bonds, but that doesn't change the fact that they'll get as far away from each other as they can. So, the two bonds in CO2 are on opposite sides of the carbon, because that's as far away from each other as they can get. Here's what that looks like. As you can tell, the angle between the bonds is 180 degrees and a molecule with this shape is said to be linear. What if we have a molecule with three bonds on the central atom, as in formaldehyde? Here's the Lewis structure of formaldehyde. Once again, the bonds get as far apart as possible, which means the angle between each of them is 120 degrees. You might think we'd call that shape triangular, but we're way fancier scientists than that, so we call it trigonal planar. Now let's look at methane, a molecule with four bonds. The Lewis structure looks like this will be a square molecule with a 90 degree angle between each pair of bonds, but that's not what we get at all. Instead, the shape we get looks like a pyramid with a triangular base. We say that the shape of this molecule is tetrahedral, and the reason we get this shape instead of a square is that the angle between the bonds in this molecule is 109.5 degrees, much larger than the 90 degrees we'd get in a square. In fact, 109.5 degrees is the largest angle between the bonds that we can get for four bonds, and that's why the molecule has this shape. So, now we know the shapes and angles for bonds with two, three, or four bonds on the central atom. Let's keep going. We don't usually draw Lewis structures for molecules with five or more bonds on the central atom, but they definitely exist. When we have five bonds, we get a molecule like phosphorus pentafluoride, which looks like this. This shape is called trigonal bipyramidal. If you look closely at the shape, you'll notice that two of the bonds are directly opposite each other, and the other three form a triangle around the middle. This kind of resembles a globe of the Earth. The two bonds opposite each other are like the north and south poles of the Earth's axis, and the three around the middle point along the Earth's equator. For that reason, these two bonds are called the axial bonds, and these are called equatorial bonds. This shape is also different from the others that we've seen so far, because there are actually two different angles between the bonds. The angle between the axial bonds and the equatorial ones is 90 degrees, but the angle between each of the equatorial bonds is 120 degrees. We'll look at one more shape now, the one where there are six bonds on the central atom, as in sulfur hexafluoride. This is called an octahedral shape, and as you can see, the angle between each of the adjacent bonds is just 90 degrees. If you've taken a geometry class, you'll recognize that this looks similar to the x, y, and z axes in the Cartesian coordinate system. The shapes we've looked at are all very different from each other, 
In fact, many molecules have very unique shapes. That's very important for many reactions that happen in the cells in your body. Those reactions involve proteins called enzymes. In most enzymes, there's an area on the surface where a second molecule, called the substrate, can bind. For example, the enzyme hexakinase performs a reaction with the sugar glucose. Most of the cells in your body, and in millions of other species from bacteria to trees to wombats, need to perform this reaction in order to live. And it only works because of the shapes of the enzyme and the glucose. The glucose has just the right shape to fit into this pocket on the enzyme called the active site. Other molecules with a slightly different shape won't fit into the active site. And that's important because your cells contain tens of thousands of different chemicals, and if all of them could fit into the active site, it would be rare for the enzyme and the glucose to actually find each other. That would prevent your cells from metabolizing glucose, and then your cells would die. So, we've learned about the shapes of molecules that have two, three, four, five, and six bonds on the central atom. There are also molecules with even more bonds, but those are much less common. But wait, when we began this video, I talked about water. But water doesn't have any of these shapes. Instead, water looks like this. It's kind of a V shape, and that's not one of the shapes we've mentioned so far. How do we explain that? The secret is something that you learned about back when we first talked about Lewis dot structures. In many molecules, the central atom has an unshared electron pair on it. Those electron pairs take up space, and they repel the electrons that are in the bonds, pushing them away. For example, last time we saw that carbon dioxide has two bonds, and these get as far apart as possible, so they make a 180 degree angle, and we call that a linear shape. Meanwhile, Formaldehyde has three bonds, which makes a trigonal planar shape with an angle of 120 degrees between the bonds. But notice that in both of these cases, the central atom didn't have any electron pairs on it. For example, suppose we had the molecule sulfur dioxide. Its Lewis structure looks like this. As you can see, the sulfur has two bonds, like the carbon and carbon dioxide. But unlike the carbon, sulfur has an unshared electron pair. The unshared electrons take up space, so this won't be a linear molecule like CO2. Instead, the unshared pair will push away the electrons in the bonds so that the bonds are at a 120 degree angle, just like in the formaldehyde molecule. However, this isn't a trigonal planar molecule because the electron pair isn't visible when we look at the atoms. We only see the two bonds, and we refer to this shape as bent. The important thing to learn here is that in order to know what the shape of a molecule is, it's not enough to just know how many bonds there are. We also have to know how many unshared electron pairs are on the central atom. It's the total number of bonds plus the electron pairs that tell us what the shape will be. Here's another example. We saw last time that methane is a molecule with four bonds on the central atom and no electron pairs. This makes a shape called tetrahedral, with a 109.5 degree angle between the bonds. If we look at the Lewis dot structure for ammonia, you can see it has only three bonds, but there's also an electron pair on the nitrogen. That means the molecule looks like this. There's still an angle of about 109.5 degrees between the bonds, but we can't see the electron pair. That means this shape isn't tetrahedral. Instead, it's called trigonal pyramidal. And this finally lets us talk about water. The Lewis dot structure of water shows that there are two bonds on the oxygen and also two electron pairs. That's a total of four things on the central atom, so the angle between the bonds will be about 109.5 degrees, just like in a tetrahedral molecule. But since we can't see the electron pairs, we call this a bent shape. Notice that we also got a bent shape for sulfur dioxide, which we looked at earlier, but it's not quite the same. The sulfur and sulfur dioxide only had one electron pair on it, which gave us a 120 degree angle. 
but there are two electron pairs on the oxygen and water, which means its angle is 109.5. Whenever you give the name of the shape of a bent molecule, it's important to mention which one you mean, the 120 degree bent shape or the 109.5 degree bent shape. Well, let's keep going. We saw that when we have a molecule with five bonds and no electron pairs, we get a trigonal bipyramidal shape. In the molecule sulfur tetrafluoride, there are only four bonds on the sulfur, but there's also an electron pair on it. It turns out that the electron pair will be in one of the equatorial positions, so the molecule will be shaped like this, and this is called a seesaw shape. If there are two unshared pairs and three bonds, as in this chlorine trifluoride molecule, the two unshared pairs are both in equatorial positions, so we get what's called a T-shaped molecule. And if there are three unshared pairs and just two bonds, then all three unshared pairs are in the equatorial position, so we get a linear molecule, as in xenon difluoride. This is the exact same shape we got with carbon dioxide, so it has an angle of 180 degrees between the bonds. The last shape we learned about is the octahedral shape, in which there are six bonds and no electron pairs on the central atom, and all the bond angles are 90 degrees. If you look at xenon oxytetrafluoride, you'll see that this molecule only has five bonds, but there's also an electron pair on the central atom, so the bond angles are still 90 degrees. But, since we can't see the electron pair, the shape isn't octahedral. Instead, it's called square pyramidal, because it's shaped like a pyramid with a square base. Finally, in the molecule xenon tetrafluoride, there are four bonds and two electron pairs. The electron pairs are on opposite sides of the molecule, so the four bonds make a kind of plus sign shape, and we say that this is a square planar molecule. So, to sum up, here's what we know about the shapes molecules can have. To determine a molecule's shape, the important thing to know is the total number of both bonds and unshared electron pairs on the central atom. For example, if the total number of bonds and electron pairs is 4, the bond angle will be about 109.5 degrees. The exact shape will depend on how many of the four are actually bonds, either tetrahedral trigonal pyramidal, or bent. Remember, the reason for all these shapes is that the electrons repel each other, no matter if the electrons are in a bond or an unshared pair. This concept is important enough to have its own name. It's called VSEPR theory, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. In a nutshell, it says that we can predict the shape of a molecule by considering the number of bonds and unshared pairs around an atom. The bonds and electron pairs position themselves so that the distance between them is maximized. Now that we know that, we can use VSEPR theory to find the shapes of some molecules we used in previous videos. For example, here are three molecules and ions that we saw when we were learning how to draw Lewis structures. In NH4+, the central atom has four bonds and no electron pairs. That means it has a tetrahedral shape, and all the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. Meanwhile, the carbonate ion has three bonds and no electron pairs on the central atom. That means the bond angles will be 120 degrees, and it has a trigonal planar shape. Finally, dinitrogen monoxide has two bonds and no electron pairs on the central nitrogen. So it's a linear molecule with a bond angle of 180 degrees. We can use this to find the shapes of even larger molecules. For example, here's the Lewis structure of acetic acid. The molecule doesn't have a single central atom, but we can figure out the bond angles and shapes of every atom in the center of the molecule. So for example, this carbon has four bonds and no electron pairs, so the bonds are in a tetrahedral shape and the angles will be 109.5 degrees. The second carbon has three bonds and no electron pairs, so the bonds are in a trigonal planar shape with angles of 120 degrees. And finally, this oxygen has two bonds and two electron pairs, so the bonds are in a bent shape with a 109.5 degree angle between them. 
If you put all that together, you get a picture of the molecule like this. You can see the tetrahedral and trigonal planar carbons and the bent oxygen. You can use VSEPR theory to find the shapes of tens of thousands of different molecules, even very large ones, and it helps explain why lots of chemical reactions work the way they do. Well, that's enough new material for now. When we meet again, we'll start talking about the symmetry of these molecules, and we'll see that symmetry is what determines whether or not a rotation or vibration affects the electric dipole moment of a molecule. As we saw in video 13, that has a big impact on the spectra of those molecules. I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, have a good week.